What's up guys, it's your boy Tom Talks Rubbish, or Tom Speller, and today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 favourite WWE matches of all time. First off, I want to thank you all for the love and support on my first video, and hope that I have much more to come. Number t first, f first one, number 10, is Mick Foley versus Edge at WrestleMania, in a hardcore match. This was at WrestleMania 22, after Edge lost the WWE title, thanks to Mick Foley, to John Cena on Raw. He then snapped, attacking Mick, and challenged him to a match. Mick reversed that, challenging him to something he is most famous for, a hardcore match. This match is just brutal, with blood, barbed wire, fire, and a load of chair shots, a load of ladder spots. I just love that match, and the finish is my favourite. It's the spear through the flaming table. You all know what it is. It's just an amazing match. Number nine. I absolutely love this next one. It is a clash of generations with Kevin Owens versus John Cena at the Elimination Chamber. This was NXT Champion versus United States Champion. KO basically debuted on the main WWE roster, stomping on John Cena's United States title and holding his NXT Championship high. I loved it. It had a great technical match. It is very well done technically, but the promos back and forth to start off the match were brilliant. And then the finish of KO catching him with a pop up powerbomb is just amazing. And actually, the fact that he wins clean is just really cool. Number eight it's, it's Kurt Angle versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 22. Uh, 21, sorry. Um, it is. Absolutely amazing. It is a technical match. It's also a brawl. There's the spot where Kurt Angle pa uh, Angle slams him. Angle slams Shawn Michaels into the ring post and starts working on his back. There's the moonsault onto the canvas where Shawn Michaels rolls away so Kurt Angle hits just the canvas. There's the super kick out of nowhere when Kurt stands Shawn Michaels up and tells him to stay down. And the finish as well is brilliant, with Kurt Angle just keeping him in the ankle lock. Shawn Michaels trying to escape, he can't, he can't. So eventually, as he gets to the rope, you think he's going to put his finger on, but no, he taps. I just really like that one. Number seven is Brock Lesnar versus CM Punk at SummerSlam 2013. This match for me is Brock's best match since he returned to WWE in 2012. We all know that Brock can be a lazy part-timer when he wants to, with just the suplexes and everything, but he does really try sometimes, and so here there's chairs in this match, there's Paul Heyman getting involved trying to stop CM Punk from winning. Oh, I should say really, this match started off this Paul Heyman turned on CM Punk. I really, I like the finish where Paul Heyman stops Punk from hitting the go to sleep, so it's counted into an F5, and he wins. I personally believe this is Brock's best match since he returned. Number six is Steve Austin versus Brock Lesnar versus Bret Hart, sorry, at WrestleMania 13. I just think this is the best finish to any WWE match ever. With the sharpshooter, Paul uh, Steve Austin passed out in a pool of his own blood. It's really cool. And this match felt like a legit fight, which is something sometimes you don't see nowadays in wrestling because it looks too choreographed. But this match looked like they were calling it on the fly completely. And one note I will say, Ken Shamrock was a special referee and you just, well, you wouldn't know because he doesn't get too involved or make the story about him, which is really cool. And then number five is CM Punk versus John Cena at... Money in the Bank 2011. Pipe bomb! This was the promo and story that got me back into wrestling after a break. I just think the promo CM Punk cut railing on management, even the fans of WWE and the management, and also The Rock for main event in WrestleMania against John Cena, even though he's a lazy part-timer in, in his own words. I really enjoy it with the technical thing, but also the story and 
the fact that it took place in CM Punk's hometown of Chicago, so the crowd was electric for it. I just really enjoy that one. Number four is Ric Flair versus Shawn Michaels. Five words, guys. I'm sorry. I love you. What else can I say? Shawn Michaels is super kick with... Oh, four words. It, four or five words, I'm not sure. Super kick after that, ending Ric Flair's legendary career until he went to TNA, but let's not talk about that. So, but this match, considering where was, Flair was 59 years old at the time, it's amazing. With the moonsault from Michaels out of the ring onto just the plain announce table, cracking his ribs, the figure four, the chop off, the slap off, and then the fact that Flair has to will himself up one last time. Super kick. One, two, three. His legendary career is over. What an amazing way to go out. Number three is Daniel Bryan versus John Cena at WrestleMania. A wrestler versus a WWE superstar. In Daniel Bryan's old words, this shirt is a parody of you because you are a parody of wrestling. This match was great. And it was the start of the Yes movement and a technical match. And I also include this one for the aftermath because I really enjoy Triple H turning on Brian, allowing Orton to win the title, which would later ascend to the Yes movement. But going back to the match, again, it's just a great technical thing. And it, and it makes um, John Cena look really good. And with Daniel Bryan. But it doesn't look like he helps them to a great match at all. It just makes both of them look really good and on par with each other. And the fact that Daniel Bryan won with a running knee. Which is a move we hadn't seen at that point. Just makes it even more special. Number two is Batista versus Triple H at Vengeance 2005. Hell in a Cell for the World Championship. This is one of my favourite stories in wrestling. Batista and Triple H were members of Evolution. Until Batista turned on Triple H after winning the 2005 Royal Rumble. And let's be honest, most of their matches from Mania to Vengeance at this point, which was too much later, were just meh. But this one with the blood, the cell, Ric Flair's involvement, it just... it And the fact that Triple H finally lost in the cell after being undefeated so much it made Batista into the star he is today and he, I don't think he'd be a star in Hollywood without it and number one is Shawn Michaels versus Undertaker at Wrestlemania 26 simply put the greatest wrestling match with the greatest story WWE has ever told the year previously at Wrestlemania 25 Shawn Michaels came this close to beating Undertaker's legendary undefeated streak. But, and it became almost an obsession with him trying to do it, with him saying, I have no career if I can't beat you. He would then try and win the Rumble, the 2010 Rumble, but then get eliminated and start super kicking refs because he's going crazy because he wants to win. Finally, he would resort to um, drastic, in drastic actions with, um, uh, uh, getting into the el elimination chamber to cost um, Undertaker the world title to be told you the only way you can have matched if you put your career on the line. Once again, the a brilliant match from start to finish with some actual scenes that look like a real fight. A finish where once again Michaels is emotionally beaten, physically beaten, and he pulls himself up on Taker. To slap him in the face. For Taker to go crazy. And tombstone him. To finish his legendary career off with a 1, 2, 3. This, is my, this has been my top 10 list. Thank you for listening guys. And don't forget to subscribe.